mask mandate is lifted in Middleborough schools. We recap all winter sports, and MHS had their annual Powder Tough match. This is MET News. Hi, and welcome to MET News. I'm Bailey Martin, let's get right to the lead. After two years of wearing masks, Governor Baker decides to end the mask mandate within Massachusetts public schools. Here's Zoe Perriman with more. During the past two years, COVID-19 has negatively impacted the world. We all undertook a global pandemic which affected millions of people. Now, here we are with Governor Baker lifting the mask mandate within public schools. Let's dive deeper into the situation and hear everyone's thoughts and concerns. We're so excited that the mask mandate has been lifted. And we are so excited to see everybody's shining faces again in school. The subject that I'm in or the area I'm in, I'm away from people enough that I don't really feel like that having a mask on or a mask off was going to affect me either way. You know, like very rarely am I in someone's space. I try to keep people in their space. I'm in a giant room. Um, so for that and my own personal well-being, it's, it's pretty good. So I'm probably not going to be wearing my mask at school uh, unless I know there's like a class that someone in there has a compromised immune system. Uh, my opinion on the mask mandate, um, I think it has its pros and cons. Um, you know, it's also keeping others safe and, you know. I think the mask mandate um, is a good thing. Uh, because, you know, it gives people the option if they want to wear the masks or not. Uh, I still believe that there should be uh, at least, like, a vaccine mandate or something, you know, to still keep people safe, but um, I do believe that, um, that it is better to give people a choice uh, in if they want to wear or not, because a lot of people have their own opinions and they should be heard. So I like the mask mandate just because I feel a lot more free and I actually like the high school experience. I got the chance to catch up with some school committee members, Richard Young and Richard Oakley, for their opinion on the lifting of the mask mandate. I'm happy that people get to choose what they'd like to do, um, and I hope that people really work hard to respect each other's choices. And this is always a place where kids have respected each other, and I appreciate that. I'm honored by that. Well, I think it's certainly time for us to make a change. Um, admittedly, it was a little sooner than I would have hoped, but I think that um, it is time for us to, to move on, and I think we just need to support each other at this point in, in you know, who, whoever wants to be a little more careful or less careful. And I think we just need to be careful not to let this get out of control again. So all in all, I'm actually very happy um, that we're moving in this direction because it means this nightmare is almost over. After hearing feedback from students, teachers, and school committee members, we now have a better understanding on everybody's thoughts and concerns. This is Zoe Perryman with MET News. Coming up next is the Powder Tough Tournament clips and results, but first, here's MET Sports with Ryan Delancey. Thanks, Bailey. The boys' basketball program has seen dramatic improvement over the past few seasons. On Monday, February 11th, the JV basketball team played against East Bridgewater. Let's check out the highlight of the game. JV Boys Basketball played their last home game against South Shore League rival Abington. Here are some highlights from the game.
The varsity squad played Mashpee Falcons on Tuesday, February 1st, winning 75 to 41. Let's check out some highlights. On Friday, February 11th, the varsity boys basketball team played against East Bridgewater. The final score was 58 to 54. Here are some clips from the game. On Tuesday, March 1st, the Varsity Boys basketball team hosted Dighton Rehoboth in the first round of the tournament. It was an intense game. The Sachems came out with a 70-63 win. Now let's take a look at a highlight from the game.
Despite losing several starting seniors from last year's roster, the girls basketball team had another strong season, qualifying for a tournament before losing at Duxbury in the first round on March 1st. On Tuesday, February 8th, just before their season came to a close, the Middleborough girls varsity basketball played Norwell. Let's go check out some clips. On Friday, February 11th, the girls varsity basketball team played a tough game against Notre Dame and fought hard until the end, which ended with a score of 47-68. to Here are some highlights of the game. Our boys hockey team had their senior night on Wednesday, February 16th and hosted Taunton. It was a close and physical game ending with a final score of 5-5 in overtime. Let's take a look at some highlights from the game.
MHS Gymnastics finished their 2022 season strong. On Wednesday, February 2nd, they hosted Brockton High at Middleborough YMCA. Here are some highlights from the game. On Sunday, March 6th, the Middleborough Majorettes competed for the first time in two years. The competition was electrifying and an overall successful day for all the twirlers. Open class placed first, class B also placed first, and novice class placed second. Congrats to everyone. The next competition will be held on March 13th at 1 p.m. in the MHS Gymnasium. We hope to see you there. Congratulations to the winter cheerleading team for an amazing competition in the South Sectional Tournament at Bellingham High School on Sunday, March 6th. The team took third place and will enter the state championship meeting on Sunday, March 13th at Worcester State University. On Saturday, February 5th, Middleborough High School hosted a swimming and diving league meet at the Henry B. Birkeland Elementary School. Let's take a look at some highlights from the meet. The indoor winter sports team were mandated to wear masks this winter. Here's Christina Chain on how it affected different athletes. During the last two seasons at Middleborough High School for sports, masks were mandated in order to play the sport indoors. It affected many different players different ways in their contribution to the sport. I play basketball and I am a center. For what I play is basketball and my position is a point guard. I do cheerleading and I'm a base. Mass definitely played a role with uh, breathing and um, players being annoyed all the time during the games and getting yelled at by refs. Um, it wasn't a big problem, but it definitely was a struggle for a couple of players. Yes, masks do affect me during the sports season because I can't really breathe when I'm running down the court. You know, it's like kind of hard to breathe. I think the masks did affect me because I would really get overheated and I would always want to pull them down, but I couldn't. The challenge of the mask is probably just keeping it on your face completely without getting uh, harassed by the refs. And obviously this affects breathing. So um, you want to just find a balance and uh, keep it on and off as much as you can. It affected my basketball team because it's just like overall like hard running and like being able to keep the mask above your nose when you're running. The most difficult part about wearing a mask and trying to be a spectator was when I tried to cheer for my teammates. They couldn't hear me. The players on my team really stopped caring about the mask because half of them wouldn't even wear them fully. So, um, we, and we barely got yelled at by the refs or anything. So a lot of them just kept it under their chins and if they got spoken to, they'd put it up, but it would probably fall down anyways. Although most of the athletes had their personal feelings about this, they still made the best of their winter sports season. This is Christina Chain reporting for MET News. That's it for sports. Back to you, Bailey, with My MET. Thanks, Ryan. 
The MHS Powder Tough Volleyball Tournament happened on Tuesday, February 15th. It consisted of six different teams playing against each other to figure out which class was the best at volleyball. Let's take a look at the highlight of the game. Jack Juniors ended up winning the entire tournament, beating the men in black by a score of 17 to 25. The juniors went on to then verse the Bad Apples, which consisted of teachers from the MHS. Through blood, sweat, and tears, the juniors ended up on top. Mark your calendars. The MHS Music Department presents Mamma Mia on March 18th, 19th, and 20th at 7 p.m. in the Wayne Karen Auditorium. Tickets are $10 at the door. Thanks for joining us for our first episode of MET News for the spring semester. I'm Bailey Martin. Have a great night.